Alright, so we picked up a Kyle. He's got the Sequoia looking all dad bod. Big Mac over got here. Big Mac. I know Big Mac know. over here. Had to have a Big Mac. Couldn't eat the Lunchable. We got Marky and cool. his fourth regret truck. <laughs> the fourth regret truck. Fourth hey, regret. we still got a GFC on it this time. At least. So yeah, we're like, I don't know, 10 minutes away from uh, Pioneer Town where we're meeting up. So we're gonna get Big Mac some freaking nourishment and then get on the road again. All right, so if you're wondering why we call her Big Mac, look at her. She's mowing it down. <laughs> what a little clown. All right, we made it. Look at all this wood Ted got. This thing is filled to the brim. So this is their new uh, canopy. It's literally wall to wall, floor to ceiling with wood. So we'll uh, hopefully stay warm for a little bit tonight. Got the truck all popped. People are already rifling in. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Hi, from Shitco. He makes those block things that I'll show you tonight. Ted, what up? Dude, coming through with the firewood. Good work. Dude, dude wall to wall, half, ceiling to floor. Half like, a court. It's insane. Uh, just where I honestly like. There's Kyle with the daddy wagon. And Marky with the regret truck. Yeah, it's already a pretty good turnout. People are uh, definitely showing up, which is cool. Sick. And Rich, where are you going? Gotta go get some of the drink. Rich's Jeep. He just, uh, it's not done. I mean, but he got some stuff buttoned up before SEMA. He got his rooftop tent on, got his awning that's on the wrong side. So that maybe that awning will become mine. Utilize, uh, to keep the oh, that's ladder. sick. Out of, out of the way. Jeeps always waste the space between the roll bar and the window. And that's cool. Never so your ladder is just like not flying around in the back. Yeah. Yeah. You got your Bajas? Are those hooked up yet? You run like me right now. SEMA spec. Yep. Uh, yeah, this thing looks cool. So like GFC makes the rooftop tent, they make all these like outrigger blocks which give you ability to use their like specific fit kits. But they make this uh universal rail which gives you the ability to like just run it on a flat surface, on a roof rack, on something like this. So Rich came up with a cool little quick, quick and dirty custom setup to get that thing on those rhino rack deals. And then he's got some Bajas on the front, which looks Just good. A Just a few. GFC makes these mounts too. Yeah, they make it super easy to put yeah. anything you want on the Yeah, it's so easy. And then this is cool. I like this setup. This is kind of cool. Cause you get like a full cornering that you can adjust and then you get some straight stuff if you don't want to go crazy. And then you got some AEV stuff up here. So this is effectively, uh, AEV 370, a, J, a J, JL 370. Everything that you would get direct uh, put on myself, but in the same kit. So nice. from the suspension to the lighting to the bumpers, uh, basically the same thing you find on a lot for like 20 grand. Nice. Oh, and then this is like a Anderson composite kind of carbon, carbon deal. A little, uh, speed effect in there. And then you mentioned before you're going to get the hood and then probably the flares as well yes they're working on those all prototypes so uh, as soon as they come out uh, they've got a few that they've made uh, but the rubicon rears are not yet made for the jl they do have them for the jt sick and then you got the patagonia xts which i have on the raptor i got about twenty five thousand miles on those things yeah they roll good on the street man yeah um, and i mean they're capable tires for sure Word. Well, I'm gonna get a beer out of your cooler, which you probably don't have any. No beer. I saw a monster in there. Yeah, there's a monster. <laughs> Alright, Marky, like I said, he's on his fourth regret fourth truck. Regret, yeah. 
Kyle's got the Sequoia. Dude, the Sequoia is coming together. I know. It's You're crazy. like 10 grand into that whole truck. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Like, if you include like a GFC that he got secondhand. Yeah. All from the earnings of selling the Telluride. So yeah, <laughs> this guy buys a brand new Telluride when we were on our way back from two uh, years yeah. ago, uh, Colorado show Mountain West. He find, his wife found one or the dealer called as we were driving through the town. Long story short, he gets that thing, runs it for like maybe less than a year or a year. A year. Okay, ran it for a year, sold it for prop, the profit, like sold it for like 10 grand over, 12 grand over, bought that Sequoia, upfitted it, owns that outright, doesn't have a car payment. Uh, that doesn't have like a $800, $900 car payment because the Telluride is fully maxed out and super nice, but... And then Marky, we're not, oh, we're not Marky, even going in. We're not going that, oh, Marky. So Marky had a Tacoma, yep. and then he got a Power Wagon or is it Cummins? Rebel. Okay, he's got a Rebel, and then he got a Ram 2500 with a Cummins, yep. and then where are you at now? And then, then you got know, a Subaru. Went, you got a Subaru. I got a Subaru. Then I went Power Wagon for like a week, and now I'm back to Tacoma and just Subaru. Uh, I'm excited. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to have a great time tonight. Entire goal is to meet someone new, hang out with some new friends, and uh, make this a great time for everyone. So when we roll out here in a second, what I'd like everyone to do when we get to the camp is to make one giant circle. I got a half cord of wood in here, and we're gonna have one big fire tonight. So I mean, if you want to split off and do your own thing, I'm not gonna tell you, you can't do that. But it'd be really cool to have one big large squad tonight. Uh, we're gonna roll out. If anyone needs a pin. I'll share that with you, but you'll be able to pretty much find everyone by just driving. Um, if anyone has any questions, holler, but we'll probably leave here in about 15 minutes. We're going to set up a camera out there, so we'll capture everyone coming in. We'll have some drone footage, and yeah, let's get this party started. All right, so check this out. This is just the group that followed me out of the, the spot. And then we merged with a second group at the light that went another way and then they're coming. So it's pretty unreal how many people decided to uh, come hang out with us today and that are game to uh, come camp tonight. I mean, it's not surprising that people would want to camp, right? It's not surprising that people want to camp. It's just surprising that from like a couple day Instagram posts. Hey, just come hang out. There's no prizes. There's no sweepstakes. You're not gonna win something. This isn't like a toy drive. This is just like, hey, come hang out and let's camp on Saturday. It's really cool that we actually got a pretty good community going on out here. This might be a bigger second half than the first half. I know. This is, this is a lot of dudes. That guy's got a V10, dude. <laughs> There's so many trucks. I didn't realize how many, like, were they all there? Uh, yeah, where were they at? <laughs> what you got? The, oh. Uh, That's supposed to be in your truck. It's on the back? It's a rear? Yeah. <laughs> Fell off. Yeah. Passenger side doesn't do that. Hey, I know what the problem is. It ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> Alright, so we just got all the trucks set up. Final count is 59 trucks. Check this setup out. So we got kind of like a, a V 
and then we hooked it in and then our fire area is going to be in the middle of this so everybody can come and go as they please that's rad so many people showed up to come camp with us look who decided to show up mr carly himself Check out the setup for his GFC he has in his bed. So Khalil, the same guy that built my front bumper, did all this work in here. I mean, this is this is how it should be done if you're if you're especially if you're running fiberglass bedsides and you're really gonna push your truck a lot and you don't want to have to think about it. This is well done, Khalil. Pretty cool to see all those freaking wedges popped up but i got i just got fomo because i got a new camper on the ram and marvin has a super light but kyle just got this thing and mark his company's called shitco so he makes this little mod here and he has a few other things so he has this mod right here and it gives you this awning so every you could turn every window on all the sides into that but he just did a little awning mod for Kyle. So now I'm gonna make him do mine. And I'm gonna show you guys how he does it. He machines these blocks. So you see that little gold block? He has them in not gold, but also in black and orange. Orange. Orange is a special one. So let me see if I can find. I just threw everything in the truck. Where are my little things at? All right, I'll find them later. But basically what they are is they pinch the fabric and then they give you a spot for the thing. I'll find them and I'll show you guys or I'll clip them in here when I find them. But the pro way to do it and the way Mark is gonna do it is to actually put a hole and then an eyelid in there so you can um, just pop in your spring rods and you don't have these little black things. So that's what he's doing there. I'll show you after how we set it up. But if you're interested in this and you have a, a camper with a tent that doesn't have awning option factory, which GFC doesn't, they give an opportunity for you to have like your own mod culture and create your own stuff. So like the other thing here for that is GE uh, Design and Fabrication make these drip rails. And what this does is it basically reroutes the water so it goes down into the top of your drip rail instead of dripping down on your window. So you'll see a lot of people that have campers that don't have drip rails. They just have basically like calcium deposit and hard water spots all over their window right there. So as you can see there, how you install them is you just hit your camper with a hammer. <laughs> hey, I have a block underneath there. All right. When was the last time you had a mountain dew? It's a uh, real world testing. Yeah, I mean, we're out here. So he's doing like a on the spot shit. There you go. Bonnie mod on my tent. So there it is. So all he did was punch the hole and then his little punch Basically, that clamps the rivet in there. And then now I don't have to use the little plastic clamps. And the cool thing about not using the plastic clamps, they actually work really good. I've never actually had any of my tents with holes like this. But the cool thing about this is, is the plastic clamps sometimes get in the way when you're tucking your, your tent fabric in and they get stuck in between the side. And or, in my case, I literally am looking for them right now and I couldn't find them. So if you take them off because you don't want to keep them getting in the way, that's the other, for me, I lose everything. Like I've already lost the bike rack lock key and I lost those things on the way here. So I'm just like terrible at organizing my stuff. So this is a good option. So we'll let him finish that up and I'll show you how it looks and let him show you how to set it up. So let's show you how these set up. Here you go, Mark. Thank you, sir. So those are spring rods. So a kit is these machine blocks with the hardware 
as well as the metal, or I mean the plastic little clip so you don't have to modify your tent at all. All you do is install this, they clip on, and you're good to go. So let's see how these look. Yep, that's also very true. So it's hard, Other, otherwise you have to get inside the tent and then stand up and undo the zippers. Yeah. <laughs> Hold the fabric down with the other hand. That's why it's just not, there you go. Now it's stuck. <laughs> you, you can do this effortlessly every time, but now you do it on video and you can't do it. I put that protective nipple on there so you don't shoot your eye out. It's like a Red Rider BB gun. I'm definitely showing my age with that one. And you're like 100 per You probably remember when that movie came out. All right. Then you just take the rod, put it in this nice machine hole, pull it back into your new grommeted hole. Look at that. And boom. There you go. And if you, and if you want, you can actually pull those down tighter on the sides. Yeah, so you can get it closer. Yeah. Well, there you go. So like I said, the way these GFCs have this extrusion here, little T-channel, if you wanted your side windows to also do that, you can do that. Mark, what do those cost? Those are uh, For the whole 120 kit? shipped. 120 shipped. US only. US only. It's out here shooting photos of Jason, Coda's Tacoma. We've known each other for quite some time now and through our trucks and the evolution of what we've all been doing. But I asked him, hey dude, come on. Last year you shot my Raptor. Can you get some stuff? So I'll clip in some photos that he's getting right now. Some stuff we were shooting earlier. Just had to get this thing out for a little hoon real quick. Look at Dan out there. Showing everybody what that Carly Dominator kit can do. Uh, um, Mark's over here yelling at me. I don't know what he's doing. What, what he's got I'm going I'm trying on. to cook you a filet. See, I came completely unprepared with no food, and Mark is my self sufficiency. So, do you, do you want to do uh, a steak and bean and cheese burrito? I'm good with just a steak, honestly, okay. because I had a little thing okay. earlier. All right. So. Fine. So what do you got? Where'd you get these steaks at? What kind of quality are we talking? Prime. Prime. Okay. You got your. Little, they were on the sale rack. Little they're Eureka only, Two Burger. They're all, they were only uh, two dollars. I love it. They expired yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it, as long as it wasn't like brown, yeah. No, it wasn't brown. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. It'll be good. It got cold last night. It wasn't too bad. I recently got one of those Aeronaut hover quilts and that thing is just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, it's cold. It is. That was your first time camping, Chris. <laughs> What are you great. watching? First time camping? That was amazing. Was it good? Yeah, it was great. What about you, Kyle? That was great. Big Mac, you up yet? Big Mac's still sleeping. She's got her fucking whistling burger. Uh, burger. <laughs> Bur I can't speak, dude. My mouth is so cold. Her whistling booger. And that's what woke you up? Sick. Oh, why are you so tired all the time? Oh, you drink a lot of beer. No, not that much. No, you were like slurring your words and you were just kept repeating the same story. You just poured really. the water in and it's already crystallizing. It's insane. Oh, yeah. You right now? Kyle just poured that in and now he's got a little slushy going on. It's 
Check in with old man. Uh oh. Mark's got the coffee going. You ready for a truck yet, Mark? Am I what? Are you ready for a truck yet? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, come on. Come on, dude. And Roxy's not even here right now. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Can't find anything. It's not even that crazy cold. It's probably like 40 right now. But my hands in the gloves have hit that like cement feeling. Where they're just so cold. They feel like clubs. I'm gonna warm these boys up. Got a few gaps, a few uh, early risers that took off, but we still got a good little crew going on. You probably the one that got into Marvin's. What are you doing, dude? Probably ate a bunch of foil. He's just keeping warm, dude. In the shade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> So what I didn't account for is the fact that it's Sunday and a lot of people are going to want to visit Joshua Tree. So I did have to wait in like a 35, 40 minute line to get in the entrance. But we're here. It's all good. Here it is. So if you've never done this, it's nothing crazy. Sandy kind of gravel for a while. It's nice and flowy. Just a nice, good scenic trail. So we're here. See, it's pretty straight, and then you can split off. It's a one way deal, so you got to go this way into Purdue. So, typically, what we would do is go from here, like all the way off the 10 Dillon Road, Purdue Canyon up, and then out, and then out the park that way. So, it's pretty fun. I mean, it's nothing crazy, it's just I think it's better than just taking Highway 62 out. So, whatever small price to pay for a little scenic drive on the dirt so let's get to it the truck is turning out I'm so stoked on this thing All right, so right here, a couple miles in, as I said, it's one way. So the signs tell you, like, don't go that way. That's the way in. So this is just a little loop around, and they both pretty much go to Purdue. So when you're coming out, that's where you come up and go out to the park entrance, and then this is the way down. So this uh, is definitely like a four-wheel, four-by, all-wheel drive recommended, but... I would say it's definitely dependent on the season. Um, some parts of the season, this is just full hard pack, like as you can see, I'm driving right now. It gets some sandy areas a little bit deeper. Um, and then if it gets rain, they'll get some washouts and ruts and stuff that where four wheel drive would definitely be, you know, something I would recommend. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about doing this. Um, I would say probably just stick to the recommendations and definitely follow the road signs. So shortly after that one-way sign, um, there's this like big valley here, and this is called Pleasant Valley. It's just a cool little valley in between these two ranges. It's pretty cool. 
well as you can see it gets a little bit more single tracky I mean, you can see they did get some rain out here and it looks like they graded it a little bit it's a little bit more bumpy it gets a little chunky all right here it is so 29 palms that away Purdue Canyon Dillon Road that away that's where we're going. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Just finished Purdue. A little bit longer than I remember. When you think nine miles, you're like, oh, that's no big deal. But nine miles, not aired down, on a super bumpy trail, definitely takes its toll. But this thing does great. I, I definitely am glad I did it. And I'm stoked to have this truck um, for sure. I mean, I haven't got to use it much. I haven't got to take it out much. But the last couple days, I'm so stoked to have something that I can tow with good camps super easy it does trails like this and trips like this no problem so yeah i'm stoked on that i don't know how much is going to go in this video i didn't get a ton of clips um kyle just texted me and he said big mac's kind of mad because she thought i was going to make a youtube video so i don't know if she wants me to make a youtube video or not so i'm gonna do it anyway so this one's for you big mac maybe she doesn't realize i'm not even home yet and also it takes time to put together clips even if it's only like a 10 minute video and this is all shot on iphone um you know it just takes time so chill out big mac but uh yeah i appreciate you guys let me know if, if you guys want to see more of this I, i'll i'll make an effort to uh pepper in more vloggy camping trips wheeling trips maybe just some daily vlog stuff sometimes there's like really stuff really cool stuff happening during the day and i don't i was like that would that would have been cool to film all that stuff so if you guys want to see more than just truck project stuff, let me know. But until the next one, I'll see you guys later.